Howdy, Beef Little Bart here, and welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Alrighty, let's review what we currently have here, and... This is how it'll look whenever you first open up the project, based on where we were from the last video. So I'm going to go ahead and hit play, and... What we see here is a nice brick background, a little bit of grass in the front, you know, just whatever, no, no real foliage just yet, but yeah, grass. Got our character animated sticking on the right-hand side. And if you listen really closely, there's a little bit of background music going on. And currently right now, we can hit play game, and we can select what level that we want to go to. So we'll just take a peek at level one, and all we've added in here is some little first aid kits, a pain pad so we can do some damage to ourselves, and then a med kit, which they're not working really well, but we're going to fix that. Alright, so what we also added in is we come over here to the other side of the map, and they're kind of hard to see because it's white and everything else is kind of a white background, is a teleporter to link us to map level 2. And we can jump right back on there and go back to level 1, or we can run over here, and we'll head over to... and we'll go to number 3. But number 3, once we go through there, it also takes us to another one on the other side, which takes us to level 4, or we can go back and go back... And there we go. So, that's okay. Um, first thing we want to do, let's just go ahead and take a look at our first aid kits. Because if we look at it, they're nice, but they don't respawn. So, if we're running around here and we keep getting injured and, you know, we keep using up all of our first aid kits all willy-nilly, um, they don't respawn. Of course, then again, also, whenever we're going from one level to the next. Notice our health is at 90. And we come over here and we teleport to the next level. We're magically back to 100% health. So, okay. I guess that's fine. And this is our main menu map. This is all there was. <laughs> so, how's everybody doing tonight? Let's go into our assets. Go into our blueprints. And let's go into our med kit. Now, what we did to get this to work was on component begin overlap. So as soon as we overlap onto the component, it's telling that the third person character, we're going to get a reference to our health. We're going to check to see if our health is less than 100. If it is less than 100, then we can go ahead and pick up a health kit, which is going to give us 20 health, which let's go ahead and drop that down to 10. So it says add 20 health, and then... Uh, what we're going to check right here also is to see if our health is over 100 or greater than 100. If so, then we're going to set it back to 100, so we cap it out at 100. So the next thing we want to do is we want to go ahead and set it up to where this will respawn. So what we told it to do right here is destroy actor. So let's actually get rid of that destroy actor, and instead let's do something a little bit different. And we want to get our static mesh for our cross. And... We want to set visibility, connect that up, and make sure that's unchecked. Okay, and we're going to go ahead and add in a delay. And what do you think? Uh, for testing purposes, let's go ahead and go with a five second delay. Um, and then we'll do the same thing again. We'll set visibility. Now, if you're wanting to try to clean up your nodes a little bit so that you don't have this line going all the way through this, you can draw a line right over here, and you can look down here. You can add a reroute node. And then from here, you can set your visibility again. And that way, you get a little bit cleaner layout of your lines. It's easier to follow because you know that you can follow all the way across. So we're going to set our visibility checked here. So what this will do here is we'll compile and save. And let's actually go to... No, let's go to our maps instead of being a dum-dum here. 
in our map, it's level one, and let's hit play. Now, whenever I go ahead and damage myself here a couple times and go over here and grab a, a med kit. Now you see it didn't disappear here. So let's take a look at it again here. So we want to make sure that we we um, change our visibility, but it is not disappearing. So what we need to do is look at a way of actually telling it to make sure that we get rid of it. So let's look at it one more time. Let's make sure we can use it. We ran through it and nothing happened. The mesh is still there. So let's start off with Let's move this over just a little bit. Let's create a variable. Um, well, just for now. We're getting there, we're getting there, relax. So, we want to have a little bit of a See, I like to actually go through the, the discovery process and showing how and why everything is being done. So if it is visible, then we can utilize all this good stuff here. And yeah, ain't nothing wrong with that though. So when we set our visibility, we should probably actually move that a little bit farther back into our, our code so that um, we give our health, do our thing, but it should still work for right now. And we told it to use the cross. Let's see here. Well, you have something completely planned and then you totally just your brain shuts down so the set is visible to false and then that should make it invisible for us or not able to pick it back up again and then after our delay we set our visibility back in again and we want to go ahead and turn our visibility back on Still not 100% yet, but we're going to get there. The whole part of creating all this new stuff is being able to do one thing at a time. And you see, it's totally not even working at all. I also get to where I, I can do something simple and totally screw everything up. So, with our cross, is there, we want to set visibility to not visible. It's just funny how something very, very simple can break really, really easy. If I told everybody what I was doing for the last two days trying to figure out, then it would just be horrible. All right, so across, we're telling it to not be visible, to set visibility to false. We'll see the, the the bad thing is I've done this this same thing of setting visibility. I, I've done it a hundred times, and it works in every other project that I'm doing. But you know, if I were to Set head in game. Now, why did it need to actually do that? But as I already had the reference to it, I mean that's the other option to doing that. But I've always used set visibility, and I've never had any problems whatsoever.
No, that's actually not not true. I mean, it, it's I very seldom do I actually push that up into becoming the root. Um, I sometimes find that it actually makes things break more frequently than not whenever I do that. So I quit doing it. And this the method the method of setting visibility worked. It always has worked for me in the past, and it's only because I'm streaming right now is because is why it's not working. And see. Didn't work there either. So what I've actually found is occasionally, just occasionally, UE4 just has it out for me. <laughs> it's just one of those things where I'm going to close the blueprint and save everything. I'm going to go back in there and we're going to do it all over again. So we don't have a destroy actor in there and we don't want to destroy the actor. Yeah, see this is something that that's very simple that I've done a hundred times that is now just not totally not working. Sorry. Um yeah, streaming's just fine. Someone was asking me if I was still streaming, and I'm like, uh, yeah. Um, let's see. So let's let's do it all over again. We'll actually get a reference to our cross. We will. Yeah, it's still working. So it's just one of those things where, um, like the other day, I had to redo the same thing four times, and it didn't do anything different each of those four times and then on the fourth time it actually worked so I don't know what's going on with 419 I've been having a lot of issues like that um, but I have always used set visibility and it's always worked just fine and if it doesn't work then I'll just come back and we'll do it again set visibility again so we're not we're gonna need it we know we are and then we're gonna go ahead and do our delay and then we're going to go ahead and give that a five second delay and then we're going to go ahead and set is no we need to do that in between there set is visible to false then start our delay and then we'll hook this back up set our visibility again and We'll go ahead and set is visible to true. I actually did this in this project before doing the stream to make sure that I wasn't going to look like a complete another idiot. To make sure that, you know, the same thing that I always do is going to keep working. And you see, it's not disappearing. Not healing. So let's look at. Well, let's go ahead and first off do that. Yeah, welcome to Unreal Engine 4 is all I have to say about that. Something that works for you every single solitary time isn't always going to work every single solitary time. Okay, see, so it did not disappear and it keeps healing. So, yeah, go figure. We set that to that variable to is visible. So we're going to default it as visible and then we're going to go through our, our process of doing our health. Oh yeah, I, I have a multiplayer game. Yeah, you've seen it. Lots of fun. So setting visibility he said, it's always worked for me, but let's try to set hidden in game, set that to true. This should also work just fine. Actually, no, I'm using a different one, one that I made. Um, 
Actually, in that that uh, shooter template from mocap, the first thing I did was disable the uh, the multiplayer setup that was for the menu. Completely got rid of it and put my own in. I just copied mine in directly in. Yeah, I've had one that I've been using now for like six months, and I like it. It's simple. It it works. So uh, one that I was going to put in the marketplace, but because it uses um, Steam Advanced Sessions, um, I couldn't put it in there. Oh yeah, the the weapon systems and mechanics. Yeah, that that has its own issues. All right, so it's completely not disappearing. Your guess is as good as mine. This is just something that happens here. So <laughs> Yeah, I give up on that one. We'll come back to this part. Um, it's absolutely just one of those things that baffles the brain. And I'm going to leave it in. Yeah, and that's a good way for, for me to show everybody that, and that's something that I do quite often anyway. So we're going to go ahead and set visibility because this is how I always do it, and it always works. So at this point, we're setting visibility to false. And then we're setting our variable to false. And then we're going to go ahead and do the same thing over here is set visible. And what John's referring to is something that I've mentioned in, in other videos. Whenever, and I'm going to run through this one more time, and we're going to see exactly how it's not working. And I'm just going to jump up and down on the pad a little bit and damage my character. It would have been a whole lot easier if I just set the... Um, Yeah, this isn't the place for recruiting. This is this is my live stream, and I'd really appreciate it if you're not trying to recruit other people in, in my my live stream. No bueno, dude. Seriously. All right. So, um, the print text thing. First off, let's go ahead and just go up here and print text. And what I'm going to do here is we know that it's going, but we're going to break it down to each individual portion. And this is just one way of testing to see what works and what doesn't. So we're just going to put something in there for it to, to show. We're going to change the color to red, and we're just going to make it stay up there for five seconds. And I'll save and go in here. And now what we're going to look for is when we walk over the pain pad and then walk over this, hello, I'm working fine. So we can see that whenever we walk over it, that part of the, uh, the blueprint is actually working. So let's try it again with full health. So it's still, whenever we overlap, it's working just fine. We can see that we're getting the text. So whenever you have a problem, go ahead and just do the same thing. Just go ahead and you can go ahead and break that. And just go ahead and keep moving it along. So we can see here that if we want to check to see if the is visible, true is working. We don't really have to worry about compile and save every single solitary time, but so we can see that we're getting a response from it. So we can then move on to the next part, and you just keep moving along. You can move that same print string farther and farther and farther down the line. So here's where we need to get into is we need to check on the set visibility part. So let's go ahead and link in here. We want to make sure that it's working after we've already... Actually, let's... before I do that, one thing here is
if we're looking at here, we have actually gone over here and we have set the health. And this is just saying right here, checking to see if our health has gone over uh, 100. And if it has gone over 100, then we're setting our, our health back to 100. Um, then it's turning off the visibility with this branch node here through this branch node. So it doesn't actually need to be there. Um, it needs to work either way. So um, what we need to do is, I didn't need to move that, is also go from the faults here and drag this up into here. So either way, it's going to continue on to that. But only if it's true will it set the, um, the health to 100. So let's actually go back in and check see what it looks like now. So let's go ahead and do some damage. And there it works. Come on, John, how do you not see that? Come on, man, that was so simple. So that's what the problem was, is we can get rid of our print text now, is we forgot to tell it from here to here. We all struggle with our own things, um, you know, um, I understand that. And when you're working on multiplayer projects, then um, knowing what to replicate can be a bit of a bear. Um, weapon equip replication, same thing. Yeah, um, whenever you're you're doing this for replication on multiplayer, um, this this setup right here keeps you from being able to just steal health um, pickups if they don't need it. So by doing this right here, you can only pick it up with this system right here if you currently need it. If you don't currently need health, you can't pick it up to keep anybody else from picking it up. So you can only get it if you need it, in other words. And then once you pick it up, it's gone. It goes away, but we have it set to a five second regen or a respawn time. And let's go back in here and we'll do some damage here. We're gonna go ahead and grab a med kit and it disappeared and now we wait five seconds and it should pop right back up again it's good that I actually have a um, an error that pops up um, and it didn't respawn let me look at one thing really quickly here um, do that would be helpful so yeah, walking over one of these with full health, it doesn't do anything. They stay right there and they keep right on spinning. I got 100% health and I can't ninja these things at all. But if I need one, I can come over here and grab one. It'll go away and then, well, we have our timer set to five seconds. So you see it popped right back up again. So this is the, the anti-ninja um, system for picking up health kits. And keep in mind, these are just cheesy little crosses that I put together. Didn't even have a, um, a material for it. In fact, I mean, I've got... A, a, well, and actually, I'll just show you what I did to create a simple red texture so that we can go ahead and put one on here. So what I'm going to do is... What I try to keep with on this one here, on this series, that everything that's getting done is free. I'm not going to show you anything that um, you have to pay for and just kinda do all that for you, whatever so let's move on I'm gonna use GIMP GIMP is a free downloadable uh, program for creating graphics editing graphics things of that nature and what I'm gonna do is I'll go ahead and drag it in frame here and I'm gonna file new cam on over here Yeah, we're doing a single player game on this this example here. The multiplayer game stuff will actually be set up for, and um, no, sorry, but you can eat my ass. I don't like auto saves, so I go into editor preferences. Sorry, this is a big pet peeve of mine. So I'm gonna go ahead and go into editor preferences, type in auto save, and uncheck auto save. Sorry, that is just a 
pain in the ass thing for me. So, back to GIMP. I want to set my image size to 1000 by 1000. So now we have a blank new image. I'm going to go ahead and click on here. Sorry, I usually I'm doing this on another screen, so every window that pops up is going to be on another monitor. So I'm going to go ahead and pick a red color. If you don't already have one picked, you can just drag it around and find one that you want. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and cr click OK. I'm going to get my paint bucket and bam, you go ahead and fill the whole thing. And I move relatively quickly. Hit Control sh uh, Shift and E to save, or you can export as. See, so yeah, Shift Control E, and then when you do that, you can go ahead. And I'm going to go ahead and close this because I've already got one that I've already made. Um, Control Shift E, save it as a PNG file, and you go to. Nope, that's not it. You, I have one one hard drive that's nothing but Unreal Engine 4 stuff. So what you'll do is you go to where you actually have your um, your stuff saved and where you, you save your textures to. And you can see I've got it just like right here. I'll grab it and I want to make sure that first off I am in my textures folder. See I have all these lovely textures. So I'm going to grab that and all I'm going to do is grab the correct window. It's just going to grab it and I'm going to drag it over here till you see the uh, the plus icon and then there you go. So now we've created this red texture. We'll let it refresh its thing here and we're going to do a save all and then I'm going to go ahead and right click on it and I'm going to create material and I'm going to call this M underscore red. And then I'm immediately going to drag that into and move to my materials folder. So it's in the correct folder. And there you go. We have M underscore red. So now we can go back over here to our blueprints for our med kit and go to our mesh viewport are element 0 and element 1. We have two different materials on there. So we're going to have to do both of them because of the cheesy way that we, we actually made this. And then the same thing here. Compile and save. And there we have created a red health cross. Now keep in mind Um, well, I'm not charging anything for, for people to watch these videos and learn how to do the basic elements. Um, although I do recommend hitting that PayPal button and sending a little bit of a love my way, but um, not mandatory. Now, the reason why you're not going to want to use a red cross, and this is entirely an international thing, uh, the symbol for the Red Cross is supposed to symbolize peace and this and everything else. You can actually get into trouble on a released game for using a Red Cross to symbolize health. So what I'm going to do, so I don't make anybody mad, is I'm going to go ahead and go back to one of my two, and I'm just going to make it Chrome. And compile and save. So now we don't have a red cross, but we have red on our cross. And it works for now. So now we have just a little bit of something else to um, quickly throw into there for having a health kit. Alright, so I'm going to move into adding a little bit more functionality to our heads-up display. And if you're not familiar with what we had on our heads-up display, let's go ahead and save all. And I'm going to go into my main menu map. I'm just going to hit play. Um, actually, not in this. We actually want to go back into our level one because I'm not with it right now. 
So our heads up display is just showing our health in a number which we don't need but we have a health bar that will move as we lose or gain health. So let's add in the functionality of having hunger and thirst. So what we need to look at is our interface and our player HUD. And this is our little heads up display here. And I'm actually going to scroll in a little bit so we can see it better. I'm going to get rid of this image. And I'm going to get rid of this number because we don't need it. And um, we have this image right here, which is our black background. I'm just going to go ahead and bring this up just a little bit. And I'm going to add in another progress bar. And what I want to do is I want to copy the size. We have this one at 290 by 20. So let's do the same thing here of 290 by 20. And we're going to go ahead and leave the blue color. And we're going to slide our progress here. It's going to grab and click in here. And I'm just going to drag across so we can see what it looks like. So that's going to be our thirst. So we can actually spend some time trying to get this perfectly centered up. Um, we can see here where our position, well first off we need to anchor it to the bottom right hand corner. And we can go ahead and get our negative 315 and negative 45. So I can copy that over here, negative 315, negative uh, let's try no let's just try negative 70 that's close enough for government work so what we've got here is our thirst and we want to do the same thing here for we'll hit, um, control C and control V and we'll drop in another one and let's match the uh, same dimensions here. Negative 315 and we'll do negative 95. Yeah, close enough. Nope. Negative 315. All right, so with this one, let's change our color. We don't want that to be blue. So we're just going to use this green color for now to assemblize our health. So let's go ahead and give them our, our names here. We know this is going to be our health bar. And if I knew how to spell, then we'll do another one, which is our thirst bar. And we're going to go ahead and do this one. This kind of adds a nice little survival feel to the game. Hunger bar. Guess we could add a Snickers bar too if we wanted to. Um, so that's good. We have them there now. And we can go ahead and grab our border, drag it back down here. So just a nice little border. Good enough. We're going to compile and save. And I'm going to drag this up out of the way. And now when we hit play, we can see we have all three bars down there. But the top two don't function yet because we need to create the variables. So we need to go into our character our blueprints and our third person character and <coughs> excuse me go back to our event graph see what we had here for our begin play was this um, let's go ahead and create two new variables and first off I want to go ahead and take this one right here and let's give it a new category let's call this player stats so we know that that's there and we need to go ahead and create two new variables one is going to be hunger it needs to be a float as well and thirst now let's go ahead and put both of these into our player stats category so now as we look right here we can come down, we got default, well, health. Huh. Well, let's go ahead and compile and save. Now if we look at it, player stats has our hunger 
our, our health, hunger, and thirst right here. So when we first come into our character, we can look, and we need to set our defaults to 100, and 100 on that as well. So now all three of them are going to be at 100. So now we can come back to our player HUD blueprint. Let's go ahead and click on our thirst, and we want to, under the progress, click on binding, create binding. So I'm going to go ahead and separate these just a little bit. And because I'm lazy, and we don't need this one anymore here, I'm going to grab the third person character and the get player character. And then I'm going to close that one out. And health by number we no longer need. So we're going to rename the one we're working on to get our thirst bar info. And we're going to control V, drop that puppy dog inside there. And let's go ahead and pop it in there neatly. And since we're getting our thirst, we need to get thirst. And then we need to, same thing we did before, is we need to do float divided by float. Nope. Uh, yeah, float divided by float, and then we're going to set it to 100%. And then we can connect that to the return value. So that is going to give us our, our thirst. Hit compile and save. Go back to our designer. Go to our hunger bar. Binding. Create binding. Same thing. Give us some room to work with. And let's go ahead and drop you in there. Connect that. Connect that. And we need to get hunger. If I learn how to talk or type, get hunger. Because we're working on the hunger bar. And we want to do float divided by float 100. Connect it and we're all set. But I do want to go back in here and because of my OCD levels I have to do this. Hunger bar info. So now we know what's what. And we'll hit compile and save and we can close the player HUD. It's good to go. Go in here. Now all three bars are all full. We're all fat, dumb, and happy. So everything is working. <coughs> Excuse me. So let's go ahead and get hungry and get thirsty. So what we're going to need to do is look at a couple different ways we can go about doing this. Whatever you want, what you want to do is you want to have it to where your hunger and your thirst will automatically start going down over time. So what's probably going to be is we're running off of our event tick for now. But let's go ahead and create custom events for what we're doing. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to do custom event or add custom event. We're going to create this custom event is going to be get hungry. So when we do our get hungry, the get hungry um, custom event is going to first off get a reference to our hunger and again if you wanted to quickly get that you hold down the control left control and left click and drag it in there and you're going to get a get node get a get right or if you hold down the alternate left alternate key and left click and drag in you're going to get a set node um, I don't know all the little shortcuts but that's one that I do know so and it does come in handy so what we want to do is we want to Start off with a delay. Just start off wasting time. And we're going to leave this as a quick delay of one second for right now. And we can actually come back in later and add functionality of when you're running, you get hungrier faster or you're thirsty faster or whatever else. So we can add things and functionality to it later. For now, we just want to get it draining so that we can worry about getting it refilled. 
so we can see the functionality of our bar. So when we start getting hungry, we're going to add in a delay of one second. We're going to get our hunger, and then we're going to do our hunger minus or float minus float. And we're going to go by 5% every second. This is drastic. So it's not something you'd probably want to do in, in inside your regular game. But this is just for functionality. So we're wanting to, every second, take away 5% health. Let's just see how it works. So what we need to do now is from our event tick, let's go ahead and drag you down a little bit. We'll collapse all this later so we can clean up our space here, but now we can drag out from our event tick and get hungry. We can just get our hungry and throw it in right here. And now we can build off of our event tick with just single items like that. Instead of cluttering it up with all kind of stuff like this. Because we're going to have get thirsty. We're going to have to get our, our minimums and maximums and start affecting our health when we're too dehydrated or too, too hungry. But one step at a time. So now when we first go into our game, watch our thirst bar, which is the blue one. And you see it stopped. It went down by 5% and stopped, which is good. We just needed it to, to move our bar. So from there, we can actually loop it back around to here for now, just for testing. Compile and save. And let's go back in here again. And now watch our health bar, our thirst bar. All right, so it's still only going to go down by 1 because we're only doing our work from here. We're going to get hungry. So what we end up having to do is loop back around on this. So again it should have worked this way off of that but since it didn't let's go ahead and throw another delay here and I'm going to go ahead and set it to 1 loop it back down to here. This is not where I want to do it, so again, we just want to see. Well. Again, yes, you can, but this way has always worked. And because I'm live streaming, is because now it's not going to work. This has always, always, always worked. Just throwing that to right there, and that way you're looping back your delay on your get hungry. So every second it's going to run through this line of stuff. And the first thing right there is that. And again, like I said, it's always worked. I've never had any problems with it until tonight. It's just going to be one of those things that's going to be plaguing me. I've got to set to um, 5 every 1 second. Uh, I'm just going to start from scratch again. Again, I get these nights where nothing really wants to cooperate. Things that I've done hundreds of times in different projects that work just fine, and then I go through and I do them again, and they just fight me every bit of the way. So I'm going to start off with it directly here. I'm just going to build it off the event tick and we're going to start with a delay and then from that delay of one second we're going to set and it was going off of our thirst bar not our hunger bar. We want to set our hunger I don't know if anybody paid attention to what was going on there, but get our hunger. See, I throw mistakes in here. You guys are not catching them. So um, we're going to do float minus float, and we're going to do five. So every second, we're going to take five away. Hunger. 
which you guys weren't paying attention to, I was dragging my thirst bar, thirst in there every time. You let me go ahead and do it. Not once, not twice, but probably three times there you guys let me do it. So every every second we're going to be decreasing our hunger by five. So let's see if I actually clicked on the right one this time. So now you watch our hunger bar. Helps when you actually are paying attention, right? John, I blame you for this. You're, you're Normally you're my, my good luck, but now you're being my bad luck. So there, we got our health bar. It's Our hunger bar is going down drastically, and that's fine. We want to go ahead and leave it going fast for right now. That's fine. So when we get to the zero, what we want to happen is at that point, we're going to, need to, we're going to set up dehydration, and we're going to uh, set up starvation. Necessary or not? <laughs> hey, I was going to say, it's one of those things where when you're building these things, sometimes everything just flows perfectly fine, but every now and then you're just in one of those, your brain just doesn't click the way it should. So I'm going to set up a variable, whether I need it or not, and I'm going to go ahead and call this starvation, or is starving. And we need to set that to a billion, not a byte, a billion, like a billion cube. So at this point, we're going to set our state of is starving. We don't really need this, but we're going to do it anyway. So here's what we need to do is if we are starving, then we need to start affecting our health. And we're going to rebuild this. I just want you to see the, the basic principle of what the thought process is on what's going on here. So we can actually pull this back down and set up our custom event add custom event get hungry and let's try it again now that we actually have the correct stuff selected and nothing we want to go ahead and do since we're setting a variable here and we've already reached rock bottom so what we want to do also is just keep it at zero so we don't keep going into negative numbers so what we want to do is get a branch and we want to ask are we starving and if the answer is no not true false if it is false then go ahead and run our delay and commence with this portion of it Now, and actually let's move these over just a hair more. And if it is true that we are starving, then we need to go ahead and set up, first off, get hungry. Let's make sure this is now working from our custom event. Compile and save and go back in here and Yep, it's not looping, so we just need to go ahead and make sure we get it to loop. So from here, let's go ahead and loop it back to here for now. Let's see what happens. Again, I'll probably just have broken everything and, you know. Okay, so the loop is not working off of there. So I'm just going to go ahead and loop it back up here, even though this shouldn't be a problem. This shouldn't be the issue. This should not have to go through all that. Yep, that's not what the problem is. So. Again, we run into an issue where we, we have a problem, so let's break it down. Oh, thank you, sir, or ma'am. So we're checking from our branch, and on our get hungry, let me get rid of that. If it is false, we're going to go ahead and take away from our our stuff here. On our event tick, 
it should be working every second and it should be checking this. We shouldn't have to delay anything here because we're using a delay here. And the reason why we're doing it this way is because if you were to grab all this stuff right here, right click and collapse to function, it doesn't like having delays in those kind of functions. So um, if we look at this, if we're not starving, then it's going to keep going to here. And then what we want to do here also is set our hunger. What is it? What is it? We have an open loop here on the true side. We need to connect in also with our delay. So we're going to, need to restructure how this is set up here. We're wanting to set our hunger to zero once we hit zero. Yeah. Um, so let's 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 clean it all up here and go back from 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 here. We're asking if we are starving. If it is true, we need to run off of here. But if we're not starving, right. So by cleaning it up, we'll go ahead and set up here. If we are not starving, then we need to set hunger to our hunger float minus float so hunger minus and we said five and so here is what we're doing is if it is false we're not starving we're going to go ahead and set our health to or hunger to hunger minus five okay if it is true that we are starving then we're going to do some more stuff here which is going to be to set health and we're going to do our we'll set up our our bottom part of our health here in, in just a moment too so we need to get our health and do health um, hang on just a second So I'm wanting to donate a few bucks here. It's awful nice of them. So we want to get our health and health minus or float minus float. And we'll just do by one for right now and then come down to here. So one way or the other, what's happening here is if we are starving, then we're going to now lower our health. If we're not starving, then um, let's see. Sorry, if we are not starving, then it's going to go ahead and just knock off a little bit of our hunger. So now we need to go ahead and loop it back in from here to here and from here to here, right? Looks terrible, but let's test it out and see if my theory is correct. Again, I've done this a hundred times, and then this is one of those things where, hey, error. It did not like that. What did I do wrong here? If starving is true, then we need to set our health to health minus one. So whenever I hit play, it gives me an error. It says infinite loop detected. Okay, so it doesn't like the infinite loop idea. So let's break this. Because from this way, it's actually looping in this way here. And if we hit play, it's still going to be an infinite loop. Oh. Sorry, um, forgot to put in my delays. So let's add in a delay 
and we're going to do a delay of one second sounds good and we'll connect both of those to there and then we'll bring that back over to here okay, this is just one of those nights where my brain is not cooperating So we know that the infinite loop is not is is broken here, but what happened here is it went and just dumped everything. So let's just bring it up here to a delay of five seconds. So what we're wanting to do is every five seconds we want to run this check here on the get hungry. And for some reason, it just dumped all the way straight down to there. All right, we're going to dump this stuff off here because I'm having one of those days where nothing wants to cooperate. Um, we're going to leave nothing off of the true side except for... The delay. Now, I'm just going to go ahead and just. This wasn't the live stream. I just would have gone ahead and restarted the whole thing and just said, "Hey, okay, now we're going to do this." You know. We're going to just start from scratch on that. I've done this, like I said, a hundred times, and this is the joys of Unreal Engine 4, is sometimes something very, very simple will kick your ass into making you look and feel stupid. Don't worry, it's not you. It's me. It's always me. So, um, I'm just going to run everything off of this. I'm just going to free flow here. So, we want to um, run a branch. We want to check to see if we're starving or not. And if we're not starving, then we can go ahead and go through the um, this process. And we'll clean it up here in a little bit. Um, if we are not starving, then let's go ahead and set hunger. Let's go ahead and do a delay here. And let's wait two seconds. And then let's go ahead and set our hunger to our hunger. Make sure I'm getting the right one. Not thirst, but hunger. Get hunger. Minus. So float minus float. And we want to do, we'll leave it at one for now. So we're going to get our base number of hunger, which is 100, and every two seconds we're going to take one away from that. So that's where this should be setting this to right here. So let's go ahead and loop that back up to here, and let's see what happens. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm just having one of those days where nothing is cooperating. So, okay, I don't know if you guys can see it or not, but the thirst is go the hunger is going down. I'm going to go ahead and speed it up a little bit so that um, we're dropping down to one second and we're taking away five again. So let's compile and save. So we can see a drastic change of what's happening with our hunger bar. It is steady going down. So that's good. Well, not good that we're dying of starvation here. But let's actually go ahead and die from starvation. So we see that the bar is going down. So what we need to look... Oh, I hear taps. That means it's 10 p.m. Um, local military base. Um, I get to hear their bugles every night. So, All right. So if we are starving, then we're going to delay. Just like we did down here. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to set health. And we're going to set our health. Let's go ahead and move our begin play. 
we're going to set our health to health, get health. We're going to do float minus float. And then we're going to go ahead and do that. So we're going to go ahead and take away five. And then we'll go ahead and set this to our back to our branch node here. And that way we're going to keep checking to see if we're starving or not. If we are starving, then it's going to go ahead and start taking our health away. And what we're going to need to do here, though, is we need to um, we need to get some way of knowing if we are starving or not. So let's go ahead and just drag our event tick off again. Like I said, we'll, we'll clean this up later. Um, we're going to go ahead and run a we need to, to find out how we're going to get the is starving. So let's run a branch and then what we need to do is we need to see let's go ahead and if it is true we're going to set starving to true I know this is terrible here. Um, it's not the best place to put it. I should be doing it off of this. So let me actually go ahead and do that. So I can do this more correctly. So what we're going to do is we're going to undo that nonsense. We're going to come in off of this side. We're going to go ahead and we need to, from here, we need to get a branch. And from that branch, we need to go ahead and get a reference to our health. And we can grab it off of this right here because this is already what our current health is going to, our hunger is going to be, excuse me. If our hunger is, and here we can do, um, we want to find out if our hunger is less than or equal to zero. And we're going to connect that branch up. And if it is true, then we need to set is starving to true because we're checking right here to see if we're starving or not. So we needed a way of, of saying that we are starving. But one thing we need to also add in here is we need to set hunger. Not say, but set hunger to zero. Then we can branch back. However, um, we need to also branch back from here as well. So we need to come from this to here. Now, now, I think we might actually be cooking with gas. So now our hunger bar is drastically falling down. So we'll let this sit here and run our health bar all the way to zero. And then let's watch our health bar and see if it actually does something. Whoa. A little on the fast side, but okay, we just we just died of starvation. Um, because our delay is set to zero two here. We'll put it back to one for now. So that works. It does. It will die. We will die from starvation. And this is, well, drastic. This is a lot of junk here to look at. So, I don't know about you guys, but I don't want to see all that junk off my event tick. That just leads for a messy blueprint. We don't want messy blueprints. And since we don't like delays in functions, and since we're also terminating off of this as well, because we're returning back into our branch node. So we're checking our hunger system to trigger all that. So how can we clean this up so that it doesn't look absolutely horrible? Well, I can grab these parts right here. And if I want to, I can go ahead and 
collapsed nodes. And we'll call this our hunger system. Now, it's still messy, and what I'll do is I'll come back and I'll, I'll absolutely clean this up again later. And if we want to, we can also grab this one right here and get those pieces together. So let's, um, well, once you've packed this stuff and collapsed all these nodes, they're all here. You could double click on it and then go back to your event graph. But what if you don't want them in there anymore? Ugh. Let's, you know, I want to clean it up again. Um, click on expand node and drag it back out. So let's see what happens if we actually come back in here and did this. Grabbed all of this stuff right here and see if we can actually clean this up. I know it's not going to be possible to do it the way that I want to because no, both ways from this are leading to coming back to here. So if we try to right click and collapse to function it's going to fail and that's because like I mentioned before, delay cannot be placed in a function graph. So we can't place that as a function. That's why I wanted to create this as a um, yeah, we'll have to do it as a macro, but I wanted to do it as a custom event. So we do this as a macro, collapse to macro. It puts it all inside there, but we can go in there and look at it. But we need an output system to it. We need to be able to we have the input, we're coming into it here, but since both of these will both go back into this branch node, what we're going to end up having to do is, and we can't undo it that way, so let's go back into our event graph and expand node again. So we bring it back to where we were. So we're going to end up having to come up with a different method or we're going to have to just leave this as ugly. So let's expand off of this one right here and we know that it's, it's looping back from this branch going into this branch and it's looping off from here going back into this branch. This is totally a messy way of doing things I will show you later how to actually clean this up into a better way to go. Um, so we need to do our thirst system as well. So if we were to do this, grab this part and hmm. let's try doing it from here. And I actually want to go ahead and if we are, then we set this we grab this part. Yeah, see this that's why I wanted to do the, the custom event method so that from right here I could actually just do a custom event at this location here and then throw all this stuff out there so that it operates off of the custom event and then that custom event loops back over. And I'm not saying that we can't do that, so let's try again custom event and then we're going to call this um, starving your butt and let's connect this to here. No, we can't. Um, because we have this branch. I'm still going to do it anyway and break everything. And drag that off of there. And I'm really wanting to clean this up. I don't like messy blueprints. It's like the bane of my existence. So 
from this point right here, if we then come over to nope, starving your butt and run that. From here, we're already checking to see if we're starving or not. So then we can run this if we are starving. So we can run this system right here off of starving your butt and then we can do our loop back inside here. So if we are starving, then we need to loop back to here. So we're just setting starving here. And from here, if we're not starving, then we can we can loop back to here. If we are starving, then we're going to we're not even going to go back to worrying about setting our our hunger lower. So let's just for giggles try that out and see what it looks like. So our, our hunger is going down. We getting hungry. And we're running long because of these little miscellaneous errors here. So our, our hunger is getting down here. So let's see what happens. Yeah, I thought about the sequence too, but it gets too messy. So now we have gone all the way down and our health is is working so this is working the way that I wanted it to and what I was trying to do the first time and it just didn't work so this all works so I can actually go ahead and clean this up and you select this part of it and I'm going to collapse nodes and starvation system and we don't need to do anything else this just does its thing and we can throw it over here in a pile with our event excuse me you both need to go over here into a pile with our event begin play so that works that's good to go and now we can actually if we want to um, that's our health drain so let's go ahead and collapse that node health drain from food slash drink doesn't matter we just want to see what it looks like so we know what's there in case we need to go back in and edit that which we will later because we need to adjust our timing so from our starving our your butt we can actually go in here and create another custom event and we can do our um, dehydration so we'll do that really quickly we'll do a custom event and let's do our dehydration dehydrating your butt so we need another variable and let's go ahead and create that is dehydrated totally not even looking at my spelling right now so we're going to do our dehydration system and then we're going to go ahead and add it right here um, so it'll already work as soon as we finish it up here so to kind of cheat a little bit let's look at what we did here for our starvation graph and it was set our delay it's going to take away our hunger and then in fact we can actually just copy this in go back to our event graph and paste it in here and we'll look at it we'll use this to kind of get an idea of what we did we're not going to be able to do exactly but because we have to change hunger into thirst so let's get in a delay and our delay was set for one second and again we'll, we'll adjust all of our times and stuff later so we want to get our thirst and then we want to do thirst or float minus float and we're going to take away five and we are going to set thirst right here so we're up to this part right here no I don't want to see a trick my brain's already hurting right now as it is <laughs> this way works for now and like I said we'll come back in and we'll, we'll refine things later we just wanted to get this there so that it's functional then we'll come back in and tweak things make things prettier and and refine things more this is just getting the functionality part going
yeah, I mean, if you want to connect it in, just drag this right into here, or, you know, to whatever you're, you're doing, and it'll plop it in there and, and be done. I just kind of reinforcing the, the thing of doing the uh, the control and alternate, plus whenever I actually drag a variable into the scene, you actually can see that I can do that. And also showing the process again, in case someone didn't see it the first time. So we're going through the, the same steps. The repetition, the more you do things, the more you're going to get into the habit of doing them. So you'll learn faster by repetition. So I'll do something, like I'll, I'll create a function, and then I'll go back in there and I'll wipe it out completely. And then I'll come back and rewrite it again, and I might do it better the next time. And the more you do it, the, the repetition builds up. And you need to really get to where it's like talking to someone, it's like talking to a brick wall and telling it what you want it to do. So you have to really think, okay, I want to wait for a second, then I want to be able to set my thirst to something. And there it is. This is what I've changed my thirst to. But now I want to get a reference to um, zero. And let's go ahead and see if our thirst or our float is less than or equal to. So again, we're going to check it again to see if it's at zero. If it is, we're going to go ahead and set is dehydrated. And we're going to set that to true. And from that point, we're done off the top end of it. But we want to go ahead and, again, we can hold down the, the alternate key, grab our thirst, and then drag it in there, set our thirst to zero. So our thirst will never go below zero, and our hunger will never go below zero. Yeah, I, I know what you're saying, John. I just, you said, I'm wanting to go through the things in a repetitious manner so that, again, somebody missed it the first time, they can see it the second time. So from here, we want to go ahead and loop this back from the branch of the faults to here. The reason why we're doing that is we've asked, is our health zero? No, then go kill some more of it. So let's go ahead and compile and save because we've already told, and we don't need that anymore. We've already copied it. Um, we've already told it to run off of here and we need to then come into here. Make sure that everything is still good with that. So, again, we've set our dehydrated stat. And we need to look, when we are dehydrated, then we need to worry about doing our, uh, our health drain. So, how can we do that? We need to copy this, essentially, into another branch, because we need to to now ask, well, are we starving? Um, yes, then do our health drain. If not, then continue doing these. So, let's look at adding in another branch node. So we need to ask now, are we dehydrated? I'm just going to drag it from here and drop it right on top of the condition. So now it'll pull it in there on its own. So now, are we dehydrated? If Let's go ahead and break that so we can go ahead and, and answer the question. If we are dehydrated, then we can go ahead and link directly to there because it's going to go there and then come back through. Um, if we're not, we're going to go here. So this looks really weird. But what we're, we're saying to it here is, I hate whenever it zooms me out when I go back and forth between the two. When we first come in every second, we're going to ask, are we dehydrated? Yes. Then start doing this. But we also needed to go here as well. So that's why we go to here, and then here, it links back down to here. So one way or another, we're getting back to 
this part. Don't get confused by this massive infinity loop looking thing here. So, are we dehydrated? Yes. Then we need to take a knockoff of our health. If we're not, then we need to go ahead and check to see if we're starving. If we are starving, then we go up to here as well. So, really confusing. So now we want to check them independently from each other. So we need to look at our starvation system and let's go ahead and change our delay here from our input for every one second. Let's make that 10 seconds. It's going to take away one. So it drastically slows that down. Compile that and save that. And now we can come back over here and we want this to be what we're primarily looking at. I know this has gotten complicated as we're running along here, but um, we're going to go ahead and collapse the node and dehydration system. Jump right on in there and that should work just fine, but we're going to go ahead and grab you, throw you in the pile. So let's see what happens now. Let's compile everything, save, and we want to watch our thirst go down drastically now. So as soon as it reaches down to the very bottom, we want to see that it's going to go ahead and start taking our health away. Now, if we want to make sure that we're not going below zero, what we can do here is I'll show something else really quickly. Once we test this to see if our health, and there we go, our health is going down and our hunger went down a little bit too, because that, that's still working. So, okay, we see that it's working, but let's make sure that our thirst, since so that's the one we're working on right now, that is still set up really, really quickly. We want to go ahead and we want to see what our actual thirst is. So for right now, I'm going to go ahead and have it print to the text to show us what our actual numbers are. So from the faults node, for right now, I'm going to print text, and that's not going to break our loop, it's just going to add something in here. And then the text that I want to get is, I'm going to go ahead and grab thirst, get it, and I'm just going to link that directly in there. It'll automatically do a float to text. So let's actually take a look and see what's going on here. And you can see on the upper left-hand corner of the screen, the number's ticking down. 70, 60, 50. So we'll watch. As soon as it gets down to bottom and starts taking our health away, we want to see that it's not going into negative numbers. All right, so it's, it's not showing anything because there's nothing to report. It's, it stops at zero. So we see that it works. So we can go ahead and kill that and refix our loop again. Compile and save. So that's all good. And let's actually go back into it and we don't want it to continue being that rapid. So instead of being every second doing five, let's go back to every, what do we set our thirst to, our hunger to? Our starvation is set to every 10 seconds, do one. So let's be a slightly different. So every 12 seconds, we need to do, oh, I don't know, 1.5. You can get weird with, with your numbers. Play with the other scale. Adjust it to where you, you're happy with the amount of health and hunger and thirst and everything that's being drained along the way and should be good to go. So this is a little ugly but we can kind of live with it for now. We can drag these guys, stick them underneath here. Really not a whole lot we can do with that that mess for right now. I mean we can try to stack it a little bit neater but you're always going to have some ugliness there. All in the name of being happy. 
So if you wanted to, you can go ahead and highlight everything here, hit C, and event tick. And since we're using colors here, green for our movement stuff, red for our you know action stuff, let's actually go ahead and do the same thing, but let's go ahead and just make it blue. Something just different for our, our colors. If you wanted to get an exact blue, you can go ahead and do 0, 0, 1, and that'll give you a true blue. And let's go ahead and save that. All right. I've let this little simple thing kick my ass instead of it being quick and simple like it's supposed to be. I let something simple whip me for the last two days as well. Um, I don't know if you guys noticed it um, in the Discord. Uh, what I'm going to be doing over the course of the next week or two is creating some mini features that are, um, which I should probably do another video later just on that. Um, I believe that is stuff. Um, creating mini features that, uh, like the one that I'm working on right now, I just have to polish it. It works. It's working fine. I just got a couple little tweaks left to, to do so it's smoother. But many features like sitting in a chair or um, things of that nature where you can actually add some functionality to your your characters other than you know just whatever you know combat system is great everybody wants to, to go around and blow things up and shoot things but not as many people are out there creating systems for sitting down or um, things of that nature. So I'm going to create those little features and I'm going to put them in the UE4 marketplace really inexpensive because as I've mentioned to people before I don't have any income. I'm partially disabled. I can't go out and work a regular job. I can't even stand up for more than 15 minutes at a time before I'm in enough pain where I've got to sit down. Um, plus on top of that I'm trying to take care of my elderly mother and I love her so much and I do and everybody should love their mom. If you don't then shame on you. Um, and no, you can't love my mom. You know, that's she's my mom. You can't have her. Um, <laughs> yeah, so these are the little things I'm going to be doing to try to generate some money so that um, I can buy more assets. I want to start doing more reviews on asset packs and assets for people. I'm also wanting to do more tutorials based off of actually making those um, asset packs work for people. Um, things like that. But I can't very well buy a bunch of asset packs if I don't have any money to buy them with. So, um, what I'll do is, since we're at the hour and a half mark, um, normally I would like to keep these videos at the one hour mark, and we've gone a little long because I've had some little cranial flatulence, if you will. Um, if you guys want me to stream some more this evening, let me know, and you can check with me in the um, Discord channel and say, hey, stupid stream a little bit longer or I've got a question about this and if you got questions don't hesitate to ask them I have a separate section on my discord channel specifically for questions and answers nobody's used it yet they want to use the public lobby to ask questions and public lobby is for people to hop right in and just say hello and hang out and do things and whatnot so if you have questions hit up the questions and answers section and um I'll try to get the other questions answered as quickly as possible, or somebody else may jump in here and help as well. Um, but then what we'll do for our next video, I think, is since we've got health, we've got hunger, we've got thirst, um, just like we created a, a pickup for our health kits, we can create, um, oh, I don't know, a, a drink cup or a can for taking a drink or a... Um, uh, a can of food we can pick up and consume that way plus we can create a vendor or a vending machine um, where you can just walk over to the vending machine and say okay I want to get a drink and then it takes money from you so you have to get money and then once we start getting all these variables tied in together then what we need to do is go ahead and create our save game system so that every time we go into the game as our player when we go to play it's like, oh, okay, yeah, I'm level one. We need to eventually do something with the maps, too, so that we can have something to do, some puzzle or whatever, to get us from point A to point B, so that we can go to level two. So with that, um, 
it might be also um, reward. So if you you complete a certain task, you get a certain number of credits. You can use those credits to purchase food and drink, or um, buy first aid kits, or what have you. If later we decide we want to go ahead and add guns in, then we can add guns in. But again, everything that I want to put in here is is available for you free of charge. Um, things like the, what you see in here right now the actual starter asset I've actually linked to in the first video of the series where you can actually download it and play along with the series um, and if you missed anything you can always come back here and watch them and again go to the questions and answer section and go ahead and and post a question and I myself or somebody else may jump in there and just give you an answer to it so I'm going to go ahead and end the stream now and we have a little bit of progress going. I'm just letting it run here for just a minute. So you can see that our thirst and our hunger are going down in a separate way. Um, later down the line, we can also work on new new player HUDs and things of that nature. But one step at a time, focus on one little feature, get that one little feature working, and then go on to the next feature. Don't try to build the entire game all in one day because you're just going to get frustrated. You saw that I was having problems with things, and these are things that I do all the time, but yet these things were giving me a problem because I'm trying to think, talk, show, and do everything all at one time, and it just made me look like an idiot. So, um, The things that I do all the time were just not working the way that I wanted them to. It happens. It happens to everybody. My character's getting hungry and thirsty, and there's nothing for him to eat or drink. All right, so take care, guys. Check out with me on, on Discord, and we'll see you on the next video. Again, if you want me to stream some more tonight, let me know, and I'll fire this back up again, and we'll make something else. We'll, we'll make our food and drink first pickups. Quick and easy, that should be a 30-minute video. All right, guys, thanks for watching, and we'll see you soon.